Okay, so now we're going to talk about the sine and cosine rule. So we're going to go back to our non right angle triangle. Okay, and the sine and cosine rules will make our lives a lot easier. And you can actually derive, create, find the sine and cosine rules you, by going through your two right angle triangle form, um, way of working. You can actually, using some complex algebra, some rather complicated working out, you can actually find out and prove that the sine and cosine rules are correct. But we don't want to do that, it's far too complicated. If you're really, really interested, have a go, see how you get on. But really, we just want to know how to use them and what they are. So let's have a look at our question again. We use pretty much the same triangle we did before, okay? And so that's 14, and we're going to call that 25. Okay. So what we actually know from the sine rule, so the sine rule, here it is. Sine, we don't need the E on there, I don't know why I did the E, I'm afraid. Right, so sine A divided by A equals sine B divided by B equals sine C divided by C. What do, I, what do I mean by all this? Basically, we've got a triangle. This side's A, B, C. The angles are, the op are opposite their sides. Okay? So the angles are just opposite the sides. So that's what we're talking about. And that's the same for the sine and the cosine rule. We always talk about it like this. So we don't actually need to equate it all that to sine C plus C. We just need to use two of them to work it out. So, let's look at this one. Okay, and this one will say that this is angle B, this is side B, this is side A, and this is angle A. So, let's put the numbers in. It's that simple. Sine 118 over 25 equals sine B over 14. Okay, so let's just quickly rearrange. We can see it's quite easy. We just need to times both sides by 14 in order to get sine B on its own because they all then cancel. So we end up with 14 times sine 118 over 25 equals sine of B. So let's do that on our calculators. 14 sine 118 divided by 25 gives us 0 0.49 equals sine B. Remember we do inverse of sine, don't we? So it's sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.49 will equal B, which equals 29.6. So we know that this angle is 29.6. Okay? So, we still can't work out this side yet. Well, we can, because we can now work out what this angle must be. So, to work out that angle, remember, we do 1, 1, so 1 on 8 plus 29.6 gives us 147.6 and then we just do 180 minus 147.6 which will give us 22.4. No, sorry, 32.4. The maths is going. 32.4. So we know that this angle must be 32.4. So it's all working pretty much as it did in the last example. I just set that to 118 rather than 118 point something as it was before. So now we can work out this side. 
So if we want, we can record everything else, A, so this is C, this is C. So now choose whatever side you want. It doesn't really matter. Choose whichever side you want. So I'm going to use this again. And then I'll use this. So I'm going to do sine 118 over 25 must equal sine 32.4 divided by C. So now I want to find C. So now we're going to have to do some algebra to get C as the subject. So first off, we want C at the top. So it times everything by C. Okay, that will cancel the C's off of this side, won't it? So we end up with C times by sine 118 over 25 equals sine 32.4. Let's divide both sides by sine 118. Okay, we're going to cancel from here. So we end up with C over 25 equals sine 32.4 over sine 118. And then we times both sides by 25. Okay, and that's going to cancel the 25. So it ends up with C equals 25 sine 32.4 all over sine 118. And we can pop that on in our calculators. And we find that 25 sine 32.4 divided by sine 118 gives us 15 centimeters. It tells us this side is 15. And it's that straightforward. The sine rule is really straightforward. Okay, really straightforward. So what I'm gonna let you do now, I'm gonna let you go and practice some questions on the sign rule, and then when you come back, hopefully, we'll do some questions on the cosine rule. We'll have a look more closely at the cosine rule.